Okay, so um, a word of uh, uh, some confusion needs to be uh, addressed. Uh, I was a member of IBM till a month ago uh, where I headed the uh, innovation team, the security innovation team, sorry, <coughs> coming from the trustee acquisition where I was one of the founders. Uh, there I headed uh, the security innovation team that did this work. I'm no longer with IBM but with Cato Networks. No, However, tell all the truth. <laughs> Yeah, the truth is I love this topic, uh, and uh, when Oded from the IBM uh, CCOE Center invited me here, I was more than happy uh, to come and present this work, which is still being continued uh, by other members of uh, the team, including members of the center here. So, um, what we started to do when uh, we wanted to address the security in the, uh, of the IoT is try to build the model to understand who are the actors, what are the threats, and what mitigations can we uh, propose in order to address these, uh, these threats. So we built up this rather simple model, I think, uh, that starts by addressing or describing who the actors are. What are the different layers, uh, what are the different uh, levels uh, in which security has to be addressed. So we start from the things at the uh, lower part. These can be, uh, as you have mentioned, uh, consum uh, consumer-related things or automotive uh, or industry-related things. Then we move up to the local network, your home router, the router in the hospital, the router in the vehicle, it's a special case. Um, and I will uh, say now that this is probably the most problematic part of the uh, security-wise of the entire uh, model. The security of the local network is the easiest to compromise and uh, by, by attacking this and controlling this, uh, an attacker is able to control the entire underlying uh, network. Then you have the global network, what is in the hands of the ISPs and the network providers. Uh, then the cloud uh, service, usually it's not mandatory, but usually uh, IoT applications are controlled through the cloud like any modern uh, stack and therefore Cloud is also an important part uh, of the IoT security. And then you have the controlling device, which is usually, but not always, a mobile device. Surely it is the case with uh, consumer level devices. So we have the different levels, and we've enumerated the threats and the protections that are matching to each one of these threats. Uh, since we only have 20 minutes or so, I won't dive into that. Um, I hope you can get this presentation and perhaps uh, look into that some more. But with this view, we set up to uh, talk about the requirements for the security of the different levels. And you can see that out of the five different levels there, three are very similar. The things that are simple computers, maybe very, very simple, but still uh, similar to any other endpoint. You have the uh, gateways, the software to, that runs on the router, it is also an endpoint and subject to similar attacks. And you have uh, at the upper uh, part of the, of the diagram the mobile devices. Again, an endpoint whose security must be addressed. And there are things that are similar to, uh, to all, that are uh, common to all. The requirement for encryption or for anomaly detection, for secure network stacks, every endpoint needs these uh, these capabilities, so these are global security requirements. Uh, it is worth noting that some of these are well addressed in some, uh, in some cases, but not in others. For example, mobile endpoints now have pretty solid network stacks, good encryption, or at least very reasonable uh, encryption, a good ability to store data safely, and so on. So a mobile device is a very modern piece of technology. And while there are risks there, uh, these are pale com compared to the risks of your router, which was developed maybe five years ago, never patched, de delivered to you with a default password, uh, was easily uh, searchable and addressable uh, over the internet. And it's, it is surely um, a problem with these um, endpoints and will be the problem with the IoT endpoints, the things, the little things that we talk about. Um, and I'll soon go into what we did to, to address these. Um, 
the cloud is an integral part of the uh, IoT security architecture, and there, there are a list of requirements you need to uh, ask your cloud provider for, and a list of requirements you need to address on the application level. There is nothing specific to IoT here. These are true for any kind of cloud environment that uh, you have, but it is still worth uh, detailing it. But again, I don't have the time to go through that. Neither the requirement from the uh, provider or the application uh, security. I'll do uh, pay my dues to IBM, saying that IBM is a solid cloud provider, just like any other major player in the market. So um, you can choose uh, Bluemix or uh, soft layer if you want, um, you surely get a good, a, a good starting point to start building secure uh, applica cloud applications there. What my team uh, decided to do, and this was carried out in the last year and a half, is to address the security pro problems of the things themselves. The things and actually on the next level also, the gateways. And we've decided to develop Lib Security, which is a complete, small, and provably correct security toolkit for um, Internet of Things. Now, the main problem is that there are many developers who are unaware of basic security requirements for development. Once you know them, these are not necessarily overly complex to develop, but you need to know about them. And even if you know about them, you need to implement them right. So, a naive developer will store the Wi-Fi password for its for his, uh, connected device in the clear somewhere. A less naive developer will probably come up with his homebrew encryption scheme. Let's store it with something. That, that's very uh, solid. Um, people may not need, may not know that they need to address the fact that there are different users with different level of permissions for the system. And the list goes on. So instead of uh, expecting the developers who are not security professionals to implement these kinds of things over and over, uh, we decided to, to, to do that and to open source it, and, and indeed it, it is open source, and to provide a solid implementation that is complete, meaning it addresses what we believe is everything you need when you're developing a small scoped application on an IoT device. That's important because the scope makes it much smaller. And, uh, and, the fact, and, and due to that, we don't need to come up with fancy implementations for role-based access control where simple um, <laughs> access control list suffices. So it is complete in that sense. It is small meaning it doesn't require a lot of code, it doesn't require a lot of computational power, uh, it doesn't require a lot from your environment. So you don't really need full-fledged Linux to run it on top. You can settle for strong enough microcontrollers which are pretty common nowadays, or will be common in the next uh, year. And lastly, it is correct, and this is an extra benefit that uh, you get when working with uh, the smart faults from IBM Research, and I'll um, get to that also. It is very important, however, to realize that every piece of software, but surely a security toolkit, needs to be correct. A bug in a security, uh, especially in a security component that you rely on, obviously harm the entire system. <coughs> okay, so many people, when hearing the word security, have different views of it. What, what does it mean, security? So many times we'll hear, oh, I'm secure. The network protocol uh, is using DTLS or uh, TLS. What the person really means is the network stack is secure. Or all the data that I store on the device is encrypted. And the person really means that the data is secure. Or if you have Linux or a similar environment, that there is proper usage of users and privilege uh, defined on the machine. And what the user, the programmer really means is that he handled, let's say, in a good manner, the system security. However, these are all mandatory, but they 
don't suffice. You need an application level security. And Lib Security is, to, is providing a toolkit for the application developer to address the application side of the security. Why do you need that? Because if your application is vulnerable, the fact that the network is encrypted doesn't matter. An adversary can take hold of the device, see all the data, and, and use it. This applies both to the network, the use of the network stack, or to the, um, or to the data, which is most of the time unencrypted when available to the uh, application. And obviously, if I'm controlling the, the application, I'm running as a part of the application, I can get all its privileges. So even system level security is not enough. These are all mandatory, but they do need the missing piece, which is application level security. And this is what Lib Security aims to provide. So what, what are the scenarios? I already met, went through a couple of them. Every connected device needs a Wi-Fi password, or most of them, if they are not uh, connected uh, directly uh, over the wire. They need the Wi-Fi password. Let's store them in a secure enough manner. Not something that you think you know how to do. We provide you uh, with a, a good, solid way of doing it. Let's choose the right encryption type. Some uh, ciphers are no longer considered to be secure enough. The world is changing and there are new attacks on crypto, better computational capabilities, and somebody has to know what part of what security cipher to choose. So uh, we provide that. Um, and we also address the fact that there is a need for authentication and authorization, both on the device and when the device connects to the cloud. Think about the following scenario. You, Take your smart TV and you connect it to your Google Drive. A naive implementation may ask for your uh, Google password in order to be able to access your Google Drive. However, there are now new modern ways, which we didn't invent, but we know how to use, to get permissions to only specific resources on the cloud, um, OAuth. Uh, and an application developer who is not a security export, expert may not be aware of that. So Lib Security provides these kinds of solutions um, as well. So here's a quick overview of the layers. If possible, Lib Security will use hardware-based capabilities. We worked closely with ARM, who are uh, doing a very impressive job in providing good uh, hardware-based uh, security for their new microcontrollers uh, series. I'm sure Intel has a similar offering also, but we work primarily with ARM. So if it's available in hardware, we'll definitely use it. Otherwise, we're coming with a good encryption library, not something that we've implemented ourselves, but we chose it, I think, wisely, um, NACL, if you're uh, uh, familiar with that. We've implemented a simple secure storage on top of that. Nothing fancy, simple key value, but it is properly encrypted and stored uh, in a way that is not accessible to an intruder, at least not uh, easily. And then we added entity and user management and access control and one-time tokens, which are also a nice addition and very fitting to this uh, IoT uh, communication. And provided two um, APIs, actually two implementations with two APIs. One of them uh, is a plain vanilla C library that is available through GitHub. And the other one is a similar implementation written in Golang uh, that can also run uh, as a standalone process and provide a RESTful uh, API. It is worth noting uh, that uh, we took the Golang implementation and built a secure router interface on top of it. But this is unfortunately not something I can talk about now due to the time limitation. Um, I mentioned that uh, the kit is provably correct. And, and what do I mean by that? I know that most people here are coming from uh, uh, the academic world, so you, you are probably aware of model checking. But for the few that aren't, um, model checking is um, a pretty cool way to uh, check the execution paths of the program without really executing it. So while it's not always possible to check a program this way due to Turin's uh, halting problem. Uh, it is still, 
possible in several cases, especially when the code size is not too, too large, which is the case with uh, Lib Security, it is possible to apply model checking tools that will go through every branch of the program trying to see what state it gets to. And it does so in a way that is optimized to handle the fact that it explodes uh, the number of uh, paths and combinations and, and states very rapidly. And uh, we were able to use that in order to test or to verify that the implementation we did is correct. Um, in a way, we can say that we proved it's correct. It's not actual computer proof, but it's much, much more than manual QA, even extensive QA. It's, it's much more than, okay, let's try several hundreds or more um, use cases and feed the implementation with new kinds of faulty data and see where it gets to. Um, this doesn't need data to begin uh, uh, its uh, examination. It just go through all the branches, try to see whether the uh, uh, program will reach an erroneous uh, state. Uh, so this is very unique. It comes from a long time research uh, for that started for uh, hardware verification within uh, IBM security. And in the recent couple of years, was repurposed uh, for, um, for software. So we were lucky enough to be able to, uh, to use that uh, also. You heard about Amir Tumeli? Tamir Shmueli? Amir Tumeli. Amir, of course. So it's not, it didn't start with IBM. The tool that uh, we used. Yes. Um, yeah, I, his son is a friend. Um, it's worth noting uh, that we also used another tool that I hardly recommend you to use, and that's a, a fuzzer, an open source project called AFL, American Fuzzy Loop by a very good uh, developer uh, working for Google now. And this developer uh, implemented uh, a fuzzer that uses genetic algorithms in order to optimize the test cases uh, that you use in order to fuzz the uh, program. And this was very helpful as well. Uh, so if you have a, a small enough code base, especially ones that deals with binary data, um, I highly recommend using uh, this open source tool which is not the case with the IBM's uh, model checking tool yet. I don't know. Maybe it will be. Um, okay, so this is a diagram that talks, that uh, presents a couple of ways uh, in which lib security can be helpful. Um, it includes uh, the thing, the cloud service, which is actually what the, uh, the operator of. Here we talked about uh, a smart water meter and the technician that uh, comes to uh, perhaps fix or, or take some measurements from the device. Um, and again, due to the time shortage, I can't go through all of that, but it can highlight why Lib Security provides with you with a building blocks that are good enough to use uh, in order to prevent an adversary from uh, taking over uh, the thing. Um, so, Lib Security is open sourced. You can view it uh, through GitHub in uh, IBM's uh, uh, Security Innovation uh, Repository. Uh, we have the Golang and the C version. Um, the Golang, as you can see, runs on ARMS and it's pretty lightweight, can run on uh, small devices as well. The C version is the one that we ran formal verification over. We didn't do it for the Golang one. We, don't, we didn't have the tools. Uh, and it is also compatible with ARM's uh, embed platform. It's plain vanilla C. You can easily port it uh, everywhere. I, I believe. I think that that's it. Great. Thank you very much. Sure.